glacé en coque et qu'on glacé en roi avec une fille. J'aime qu'on à mon Miguel. Arguably one of the most powerful villains in all of the fantasy genre, the Master Mirror, or Man of Glass, Gaunter O'Dim. Who is Gaunter O'Dim? Well, the other day I was talking to somebody about it, and he's just an incredibly interesting character. H who is he? Us as the player are given no information really upon him, uh, about him apart from stuff he's done to trick people. But where's he from? Who is he? What's his race? These are questions that I all had, so I thought I'd make a lore video trying to present some theories and some solid evidence we have of what he could be, and also just some cool stories that he's done. So, the first question people are going to be wondering, I imagine, is what is Gaunter Odim? I mean, he seems to have limitless power. He can pause time, he can travel to different dimensions, it appears, or travel to different planes of existence. And what do we know in the witch universe that could possibly have that level of power? I mean, he can also grant basically any wish you want. It, well except they all come with a price. So, I thought the other day, what do we know already in the witch universe that can grant wishes? Something that we know that sorcerers and sorceresses have been trying to harness the power of for, let's just say forever. Well, since, since they first came about, and that's a djinn. So, if you've read the first book, you'll know that, well, it's not the first book, but the collection of short stories in, of the witches, you'll know that Geralt actually met Yennefer through a djinn because him and Dandelion found one, he had to go and get Dandelion fixed up, let's just say, and this djinn terrorised the town, he met Yennefer, etc. But Yennefer, she actually wanted to control the djinn to make a wish. And you obviously meet one in The Witcher 3, and you don't show the full extent of his powers, but, you know, he does wish that their spell would be broken by, that it was made by another djinn, which in itself is a very powerful thing to do. So is it possible that Gaunter is just a slightly different type of djinn? I mean, honestly, anything's possible. We don't know that much about djinns. Sorceresses and sorcerers pull magic from around them. It's difficult to explain, but ima imagine that magic is just all around them. And there's a theory that this magic got onto this world through these planes of existence, which is where the jinns live, or are from. So after the conjunction of spheres, these planes kind of thrust a bunch of magic into our world, and that means that, you know, people are allowed to use it. So, <clears throat> a jinn is effectively a big, imagine a big blob sort of source of raw magical energy that can effectively do anything. You know, you saw that that ship was in the middle of a Skelligan Ocean, and half of it was left down there, but the other half was on top of a mountain. That's just the extent. It said that they could flip up mountains and do anything they want. You never know, Gaunter could have potentially just been a djinn that a master wished. I wish that you had free will, and you could do as you wish. And maybe it decided it just wanted to go and mess around with people. You know, do contracts. It could have got inspired, because as we know, from just any folklore of our world, there's always a character like Gaunter. Maybe not quite as powerful, but there's always a character like Gaunter. I mean, I'm sure a lot of you have heard the story of Rumpelstiltskin, where, you know, he, he let, I can't remember the princess's name, whatever, but he let her weave gold, but he demanded the firstborn son. It's a contract that you enter into, but the price is always going to outweigh the benefits. I mean, Gaunter O'Dim isn't actually a book character, you know, he wasn't made by Andrew Sapowski, he was made by CD Projekt Red, and they did base him off a Polish legend. So in Polish folklore, there was the devil and a nobleman may named Mr. Twardowski. I, I don't know if I, I'm not very good at pronunciation. Well, in this story, the pact specifies the devil can only collect the nobleman's soul when the nobleman visits Rome, which of course, why would the nobleman ever do that? This allows him to escape the pact, and he stays at an inn called Rizm, Rizm, meaning Rome in Polish. And because he was in the inn, the devil came and collected, um, which is very similar to when Olgird stood on the full moon symbol, and Olgird comes and 
Gaunter comes to collect. He has also been quite clearly based off another character, which is in a novel by Stephen King called Randall Flagg. One of one of Randall Flagg's names, actually, in the novel The Dark Tower was Walter Odin, and he is a supernatural being of unknown origin, a bit like Gaunter, and he has similarities with, Ga uh, with Gaunter Odin. He grants humans wishes in exchange for them doing evil deeds, so it's kind of similar. And, and actually, it turns out that, I'm very bad at pronunciation, I'm sorry, um, Carolina Statia, Statia? Statira? I don't know. Um, he's a senior writer at CD Projekt Red, said that he was definitely inspired by him. So that's just one theory, that Gaunt Odin could just be a djinn that's become, well, he, he care maybe not cares more about humans, but he likes to, he has a different outlook on them to the other djinn. Because the other djinn just, they seem to just be these, this mass of magic that doesn't really want to have anything to do with anyone but themselves. But Gaunter, he could have just been a djinn that maybe was annoyed at humans and decided that he wanted to have his own way back. So there's another theory that he is just a demon. So the art of summoning a demon in The Witcher is a process called Goetia. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. <laughs> it is banned by both clergy and the Brotherhood of Sorcerers. Well, sorcerers, sorry. Demons aren't just one single race. They're sort of random. It's hard to explain. Not much is known about them, obviously, but it's as if it isn't just one thing. Known demons in the game are Himes, Drags, Dragis, a demon which possesses Cayenne, the Black Cat and Dog, the Caretaker, and possibly Gaunter or Dim. So why would Gaunter be a demon? Well, it's because so little is known about them, it's entirely possible that someone just summoned him thousands of years ago and didn't quite realise how powerful he was. Because, as we know from the conjunctive spheres, humans were basically plopped onto the monsters' worlds, and obviously other monsters were plopped, blah, 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 you know, and it became sort of a mess of fantasy, I suppose. And uh, in, in this infinite amount of worlds, it's very possible that a demon like Gaunter could exist. Possibly very rare, but there could be thousands of him. You never know. And as much as I'd like to get into what he could be more, uh, there isn't actually much on it. And I suppose with a character like Gaunter Odim, you don't want to go into it too much. Because, because a part of his thing is his mystery. But, saying that, we can still go into some stories of things that have happened to him in the games that you can find in books in the game, and just find from general knowledge, I suppose, that you pick up during the game that you might not have picked up, I suppose. But before we get into that, I just wanted to talk about one little cool piece of trivia. So if you look at his name, Gaunter Odim, each capital letter, G-O-D, if you look at it, is actually, if you do it backwards, dog. No, I'm, j I'm joking, it's, a <laughs> it's, it's God. So, you know, that's another thing, you know, God's an all-powerful being, if, if, you know, if you believe in Christianity, yeah, whatever, I'm not gonna get into that, but, um, uh, so Gaunter could be, well, I'm not saying that he's the god of the witchy universe, but it's, you know, there's always potential there, or it's just a cool little reference they put in. So I'm not gonna talk about the whole story of who he is and everything, because, you know, you'll play the games and you'll know that, or, or you've already played the games and you'll know that. So... One thing I did want to say is bits that happen throughout the quest line as well that you don't quite pick up on half the time. So if you look at some of the scenes in the Witcher um, Hearts of Stone expansion, uh, a lot of the major points, Gaunter is actually in the background and he's watching you. He's like a hidden person, you know, and I think CD Projekt Red a while ago actually did a challenge for if you could find every point that they put him in, you would get a prize. And I can't remember what the prize was. I didn't manage to do it. But somebody did eventually, and it was, um, wait, did someone or did they reveal it? I can't remember, but it's really cool. I'll put a link down in the description if I can find one of all the mentions of him in the, of all the, sorry, all, all the ways that he sort of appeared. So if you see his speech after Geralt defeats him, if you decide to go down that path, he speaks in a strange language that I'm, I can't remember what language it is. I'm sure somebody in the comments will correct me. But if you translate that loosely to English from his speech, it says, You are primitive. You think you've defeated me, but you are wrong. I can't be killed. I will be back. Which is quite interesting, because obviously, he was defeated in the past, before Geralt defeated him, in the same way, by playing on the contract of his words, you know, and defeating him in that sense. Um, so he must have been defeated in the same way before. Uh, I'm going to butcher this pronunciation so bad, and I know I've said that already a couple times this video, but it's because this is all from, um, well, east of me, Europe, because I'm from the United Kingdom, England. Uh, I, and I'm just going to completely butcher this. So his character, Gaunt's character, seems to represent characters from a German fairy tale. Well, the characters, Hollando Mitchell, if I'm saying it right, and Glassmanliel, Glassmanlane. 
character. From the Ger German fairy tale, Das Kaltherz by Wilhelm Hauff. In this story, a forest spirit, forest spirit, Glasmanlian, <laughs> Glasmanlen, grants the protagonist three wishes. Later in the story, the protagonist makes a deal with the evil sorcerer Hollanda Mitchell, who takes his heart and gives him a heart of stone in return for an infinite supply of money. So that's actually, if you didn't know what happened to Old Geard, because Gaunter, he tricked him, he gave him immortality, but turned his heart to stone, which is basically the same thing, <laughs> apart from he got given money. So another little bit of trivia, while his name isn't actually mentioned directly, it's heavily emphasized that he was a beggar that turned Marlene de Trastamara into a spotted white in the Blood and Wine expansion. So if you've done that quest, it's really fun. But you find a letter inside the abandoned house which states that the beggar sold mirrors. It's mentioned that the beggar broke his spoon before casting the curse, just, you know, like Gauntra Odim did before wrecking the ship that was holding Geralt captive. Odim's theme music plays in the background while Geralt explores Marlene's curse to his majordomo. <laughs> God, this, these pronunciations, like, I'm gonna, I'm just, people are gonna be listening to this like, oh, God, shut up. <laughs> so to round off this video, as I don't want it to be too long, because I feel like if videos are too long, people just get disinterested, and honestly, I, I see where people come from a lot of the time. So a little bit of his backstory with All Geared first, then I'm going to move on to pro Professor Shakeslock, and then that'll be the end. So first of all, you have to learn a little bit about Old Geared. Old Geared originally lost his fortune, and he met Gauntor Odim, and was ready to strike a deal to restore his wealth and power, because he wanted to marry his noble-born love. Old Geared said he wanted to live like there was no tomorrow, so Gaunter made him immortal, but turned his heart to stone. That meant Old Geared couldn't feel any emotion. The pact he made also led to the death of his brother, uh, Vladimir, which, or Vladimir, which, <laughs> <laughs> if you've played the Hearts of Stone expansion, it is probably one of the funniest things in The Witcher, or in a lot of games actually, where he takes control of Geralt's body and um, <laughs> I don't want to ruin it, it's great. <laughs> oh, I'm going to play that again soon. So Odim demands Old Gear's soul in return for all of the powers he's given him, or the wealth, etc. But Old Gear had their contract state that before Odim could collect the soul, he had to fulfill three wishes for Old Gear, and both of them had to stand on the moon afterwards. He believed that this would be impossible for Gaunter to complete, so he didn't ever ask for the wishes. Eventually, Gaunter basically demanded that he did by tricking Geralt into doing it. But, you know, you could decide the ending of Hearts of Stone, which I don't want to ruin too much. So, yeah. Moving on from that, Old Geard, after he basically thought he defeated Gaunter after doing the whole on the moon thing, employed a professor from Oxenfurt, I believe, called Professor Premethine Shakeslock to learn as much as possible about Gaunter Odim so he could defeat him and avoid being, well, having his soul taken. Shakeslock became obsessed with him, just like many of us fans have, and eventually found out that Odim was immortal, but he could be banished by defeating him in one of his wages, which, as we saw at the end of, uh, spoilers by the way, sorry, <laughs> as we saw at the end of um, the Hearts of Stone expansion, if you decide to get, you know, if you decide to keep all geared alive, you can actually do. Not permanently banished, but banished all the same, by defeating him in one of his wages. Shakeslock's obsession with Gaunter basically uh, allowed Gaunter to visit him in his house. He he just became, you know, he, he caught the attention of him. And he drew a chalk spell diagram around the man and said that if you stay in this chalk uh, diagram, I can't hurt you. So he remained in the diagram. <laughs> and then later, Gaunter invaded Shakeslock's dreams and manipulated his dreams to make it seem like Shakeslock had a daughter that he adored. But after months Shakeslock spent with his daughter, Odim had her die of sickness and proved his cruelty. So yeah, that's just a, basically what happened before The Witcher 3, and well, before the events of The Witcher 3. And uh, yeah, I mean, I suppose to finish, I can just say that Gaunter basically twists the word of his contracts to torment people. And a lot of people are like, well, what's his reason for doing this? If he has this much power, why does he have to abide by rules, you know, contracts, etc. And what I think, and what I was talking to somebody about, is that if you're a powerful being, you know, in life, think about life like this, okay? If you never had any challenges, and everything you wanted was just presented to you, wouldn't you just feel so bored? If you had all the money in the world and everything, imagine there was no challenge in your life. Imagine everything that you wanted you could just have by clicking your fingers. You know, would you enjoy it? Probably not. I mean, I don't, I know I wouldn't. So, because you, f you need that feeling of you've worked for it. So Gaunter, he, he might like the idea of be being powerful and having people respect him and everything, and he could do that easily. But he doesn't want to do it easily, which is why he makes these contracts where it's almost like testing himself. 
Because if he is an all-powerful being, why not have some fun with it? Which is why he is one of the creepiest villains in, well, certainly the Witcher series. And even though he, he isn't canon to the books, he is canon to the games. Anyway guys, that's the end of today's video. It's been a bit of a longer one. My next video is probably going to be on the School of the Viper, so be sure to keep up on... Well, subscribe and keep up on that. I just wanted to thank anyone that's a new subscriber, and if you watch to the end, you're awesome. Please tell me in the comments, I watch to the end, because then I'll know that you did, and I'll think, that guy's cool. <laughs> so anyway, have an awesome time, guys. Be sure to tell me what you think of Gaunter, and I'll see you all later. Oh, and make sure to like if you want to see more of this sort of content. I always like to know. See ya.